This arrow indicates inhalation. And this arrow indicates exhalation. Prana or apana. Now first, you, what do you do? You don't do with your mental load. You have known, now system, don't forget, you have known how to change your breath from right to left or left to right by simply meditating. <laughs> now, for attention, you see, you see, it will, breath will change. Now you don't know how to apply sushumna, that's another higher technique, unique technique. Then mind will not go to the world. Mind will not have any negative thinking. But mind will be in a joy and then you can meditate. But we are talking of breath here. In this you do not have to observe anything, except you don't unnecessarily create the pause. Basic rule, you know, you don't create any noise, you don't create any jerks, and you don't breathe shallowly. Whatever we are teaching, it's never opposed by science. No. It's not something overhead I'm talking, it's something very concrete, scientific. You see, listen. Now, what is happening when you breathe, what happens to your breath? It goes to the storehouse called lungs, and then from there goes to the other parts of the body, and then returns as carbon dioxide to your lungs, and then you exhale. Here you are forcing yourself not to allow to the toxins to be built, and any toxin is there, it should be expelled. Unique method. You just double the ratio here. If you have capacity of inhaling, one, two, three, four, then you should learn to exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You might become breathless. It means you have misjudged your capacity. Come down to three. You start it. Do not go so fast. Your face will tell you that you are doing breathing exercise. There will be a glow in your face. When Swami Vivekananda met a Swami, yogi, and he said, talk about tomorrow, and I already know, the yogi said, you have wasted your time and energy. And his name was Pahari Baba at Ghazipur. He wrote a book, Colombo to Almora, his experiences travels from down to Ceylon to Almora mountain, and on the way he met sages. So I'm talking about him. Talk about tomorrow. So rationally he said, "This nothing." Swami Vivekananda said, "Through yoga and med meditation, you can find out what is going to happen tomorrow." He said, I'm searching for something. The Swami was very enlightened. He said, that something is also here. That something is, no matter what happens in the world, sukha or dukkha, pain or pleasure, you find that, you see, tranquility. He found that this, this man has both qualities. He's all-knower and at the same time, 
nothing disturbs him. He examined him by insulting him, by doing things which you don't do towards any great man. Nothing. By tempting him, sir, whole world knows me, I want to be your disciple. He didn't. He said, sir, give me the preliminaries. No, he told, I want to be the only disciple. He said, no, you are disciple of a great man, no doubt. Why do you want to do it? I said, I will teach you what you want to learn. He said, teach one thing. So what did he say? Breath and mind, when they are perfectly coordinated and the practice is accomplished, then they function this way. There is no pause at all. Pause means what? Killer. Pause means death. Means you have annihilated death when you have done breathing like this. Then past, present and future become one and the same. Theoretically you can understand it's difficult to accomplish. But yogis do accomplish this. First, in first step, which I will tell you the second step also, three steps I am going to teach you because there are many people who have been practicing and they have come from distance and they want to learn. I want to teach, but next time if you come, I am going to make you sit and see that you do it in front of me and if you don't do it, I am going to whip you. <laughs> yes, it's too much now. <laughs> You start it from three, then four, then six, then eight, then ten, then twelve, then fourteen, then sixteen, then eighteen, like this. Go up to thirty. Not difficult, but it should at least take six months' time. At least. Your body will not have any sort of toxins. Your body will be disease-free. Your body will look like very young, smooth body, like silk, you see. And this will help mind. When you are doing this, mind is following. It is a sort of training to mind too. Two are trained together, you see. If you are doing exercise of this, you are, tra you are training all your five fingers, you see. When you are doing this exercise, mind is also being trained. It's a training of mind also. Because mind and breath, in my way, in my opinion, those who have, who are committed to do sadhana, who want to do sadhana, should pay attention towards this method more than all Nadi Shodhanam too. This is higher Nadi Shodhanam. In which, which posture do you do that? Easiest is Savasana. Put a pillow. You come down, I'll tell you. Come. Bring that to your pillow. Lie down here. Yeah. Yes. You know, little pillow is needed because what happens? Without pillow, sometimes gas is disturbed. You know, if your bowel movement was not regular, if there was not enough roughage in your food, if you did not chew the food, you see. So, upon a while, the gastric problem can, you know, disturb you a little bit. So that's why this is done. Now, apply Ashni Mudra. Squeeze this bottom gently. Squeeze your buttocks. Mm 